Aiwa tenzi wangu, baba wangu ka miuchi. Wona mwe ya mutende we. Let's raise our hands and worship the Lord tonight. Baba wangu tenzi, kamuchira iwoka. Wona mwe ya mutende mwe ya muche tenzi wangu nasite baba kamuchira iwo kamuchira iwo Oh, 
last time. Ona mwe ya mutene baba, jimi tenzi wangu, ya kumira kamuchira iwo. Oh, just sing it most intelligent act, brother sister. Ona mwe ya mutene, jimi tenzi wangu. Baba ga muchira iwo. Oh, what a request, what a prayer, what a desire tonight. Eh, ya muchene. Jimi tenzi wangu. Baba ga muchira iwo. Kamichira iwo. Tenzi wangi, amuchira iwo, uchira iwo, oje ova, je ova tenzi, mabaga muchira. For the last time, oh. Hallelujah. Give us living by faith. This lesson is standing. I can know today what the morrow may bring, if shadow or sunshine or rain. The Lord I know ruleth over everything. And all of my worry is vain. I'm living by faith in Jesus above, trusting, confiding in His great love. From all I'm said, let's go faster, brothers. In His shelter. I'm living by faith, and I feel no harm, and I feel no alarm. No tempest may blow, and the storm clouds arise, obscuring the brightness of light. I'm never alarmed at the overcast skies, brother. Oh, the master looks on in the star. Oh, I'm living by faith in Jesus above. Trust in confiding in his great love. From oh, I'm saved. In his sheltering arms, I'm living by faith, and I feel no harm, and I feel no alarm. I know that he safely will carry me through, no matter what if the devil is a lie or the same arm. Why should I then care though the tempest may blow if Jesus walks close to my side? I'm living by faith in Jesus' above. I'm 
trust him confiding oh it is great love oh from all harm self it is sheltering arms together now i'm living by faith oh and i feel no harm oh and i feel no harm our lord will return some sweet day our troubles within all the hope the master so gently will lead us away tonight oh beyond that blessed heavenly shore tonight yes i'm living by faith in jesus and I'm trusting don't fight it is great love from all harm said it is sheltering I'm, I'm living by faith and I feel no harm and I feel Last time, one more time. Our Lord will return to this earth some sweet day. Our troubles within all the old. The Master so gently will lead us away beyond that blessed heavenly shore. Yes, I'm living that day. And I'm trusting, confiding in His great love. Oh, from all harm said, in His sheltering arms, I'm living by faith in a few no one. And I feel no alarm. Keep going ahead of us tonight. Let's take our seats. Amen. Uh, we are coming up. See the show now. But you can be in the show town guys. And I put you up on a part of the year. We are going to be in the year. This is the year. Talk it over with you. 
Praise the Lord Jesus. Let's clap hands once again. Hallelujah. 
aleluia Oh, praising our King That shining river tonight Where the saints will gather yeah, we shall see our play For the last time, our hopes are bright Our lamps are burning tonight And day by day Our hearts are yearning This is the evening He will come in the morning Then we shall wait And that's the reason we shout tonight. We shout. Ah. Oh, that shine we. Yeah, we shall see how one play said Messiah. Give God a hand of praise tonight. Amen. There are people almost everywhere whose hearts are all aflame with a father that fell at Pentecost. It is ending. Oh, glory to his name. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of I'm one of them now, one of them. Hallelujah, one of them. I'm so glad to now. Let's put our hands together and worship the Lamb. Oh, one of them. Hallelujah, one of them. I'm so glad to now. I'm so glad that I can say. Though these people may not let it be. Yes, no boss of worldly flame. They have all received their Pentecost, baptized in Jesus' name. And are telling now both far and what is far easier the same. And I'm so glad that I can. Let's just clap our hands the all time way, brother, sister. Them now, one of them. Hallelujah, one of them. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. They were gathered tonight. They were gathered in the upper room. Oh, praying in his name. They were baptized with the Holy Ghost and powerful service came. Now what he did for them that day, do for you the same. And I'm so glad that I can together now. Oh, one of them now, one of them. Hallelujah, one of them. I'm so glad now, I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them, oh, one of them, hallelujah, one of them. I'm so glad tonight. Listen to this, come my brother, seek this blessing tonight. Seek this blessing that will cleanse your heart from sin. That you start that joy bells ringing and will keep your soul aflame. It is burning. Oh, glory to his name. I'm so glad that I can say. I'm so glad, I'm so glad that I can say. Oh, that's better. Louder, one of let us worship the all time way, brother. One of them, I'm so glad, I'm so glad. Though these people may not let it be, brother. Oh, though these people may not let it, no boss of world is them. 
They have all received their plenty because baptized in Jesus' name. And I tell him now, both far in what is far is yet the same. I'm so glad that I can say. I'm so glad, I'm so glad that I can say. Oh, one more time, there we gathered in the upper room, brother, sister. Oh, praying in his name. They were baptized with the Holy Ghost and powerful service came. And oh, what he did for them that day. I'm so glad that I can say. Oh, one of them now, one of them. Hallelujah, one of them. I'm so glad now. Oh, God bless the church. Hallelujah, one of them. Hallelujah, one of them. I'm so glad now. Let's sing together more powerfully the last verse. Come, my brother, seek this blessing tonight. Joy bells singing and will keep the soul aflame. It is burning now within my heart. Oh, glory to His name. I'm so glad that I can say, Oh, last time, one of them now. One of them, one of them. One of them, hallelujah, one of them. I'm so glad, I'm so glad I can say one of them. I'm too glad tonight, say hallelujah, hallelujah. He's coming soon, he's coming very soon with joy. We welcome his returning. It may be him on. It may be night or noon. And I know that is coming soon. In these the closing days of time. In these the closing days of time. What joy, the glorious hope of us, oh, that soon, oh, wondrous truth of life. Oh, this old time he is tonight, he shall reign, he is the king of kings tonight. He is the king of kings and lord of lords. He is coming, he is coming. You believe it? Joy, we welcome his returning tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, it may be in the morning. It may be during the night in other places of the globe. Hallelujah. But I know for sure tonight that is coming soon. The signs are round in head and head tonight. The signs. Around in earth and air, oh, painted, oh, painted on the star. It's all over the place, in the combi, in the street, all over. The ministers of the gospel are preaching all places tonight. Yes, the, the coming of the Savior. Oh, he's coming. Oh, testify tonight. Yes, with joy, we welcome his return. Oh, it may be in the morning. It may be night or noon. But I know that he's coming soon. The dead Christ who 
need us now. One of these days, they'll rise back. Hallelujah. Oh, in less numbers, all of them shall rise. And through the portals of the sky, he shall come, he shall come. To prepare our paradise, He's coming soon. He's coming. Are you cool as a kadaro hama? Whoa, we joy. We welcome His return. Oh, it may be in the morning, my brother, my sister. Wherever you are, in the four corners of the world. Oh, but sure enough, I know he's coming. He's coming soon. And we who live in yet remain. God, I'm God, I'm. Shall meet our faithful Lord. This hope we cherish not in vain. It is not an old woman's fable, but it is the word of God tonight. And we comfort one another by this word. He is coming. Very, very soon, oh, with joy, we welcome His return. For the last time, and we who live yet remain, and we you living yet remain. You, 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 you and me tonight shall meet our faithful Lord. All oh, this hope is not in vain, brother. We cherish not in vain, but we comfort one another tonight. Oh, by the word of God, oh, he's coming. He soon, oh yes, he's coming. Oh, with joy, we welcome his return. Yes, it may be more. It may be. Song, standing on the promises of God tonight. Then the keys of Cain. He was without standing. He must, he must sing some of these songs. The Come on, brothers, standing. That's the title of the song. Standing on the promises of Christ, my High King. Oh, eternal legends, let his praise he sing. Oh, glory in the highest, I will shout. I am standing on the promises of God. Oh, stand, I know standing. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, oh, stand. And I am standing on the promises of God, standing now, standing on the promises that can. When the howling storms of doubt and faith, oh, by the living word of God tonight, I shall prevail. I am standing on the promises of God, standing now, let's sing out of tonight. Oh, don't be shaken by the devil. Standing, I am standing. I am standing on the promises of God.
standing now, standing on the promises I now. Oh, perfect presence cleansing in the blood. Standing in the liberty tonight. I am standing on the promises of God. Standing now. Oh, louder. I am standing now. I am standing. I am standing. I am standing on the promises of God. Standing now. Standing on the promises. Oh, bound to Him eternally. Overcoming daily, brother, sister. I am standing on the promise. Standing, standing, stand. Standing now, stand. I'm standing. Oh, oh, standing. I'm standing. I am standing on the promises of God. You're a shout of praise tonight. Hallelujah. Below. I'll say yes, yes, yes. I'll say yes, yes, yes. I'll say yes, Lord. I'll say yes, Lord. I'll say yes, I'll say yes, 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 I'll say yes, Lord, and I'll say yes, Lord, I'll say yes, yes. Father, we know 
that you are in our midst today because you've got no ending of days. Lord Jesus, I want to pray tonight in as much as we God the Father. After brushing shoulders with devils throughout the whole day, Father, we can be accorded time to come into a house, Lord, Father, that we be able to have fellowship with you so that you can wash away every anointing that doesn't come from you. Heavenly Father, to open our eyes, O God, to the great realities of God. Heavenly Father, to bring yourself so close to us, Father, until you are just within reach, Father, that you can speak and we can hear. Father, all the sick that's in our midst, Lord, you are able to touch each and every one of them, Father, to make them whole. Father, some of our sick are not even in the building. They could be in the different homes and different hospitals. We pray, O oh God, that you would touch each and every one of them. Father, so that they might be made whole. And, O oh God, we want to pray for the service tonight. Father, we don't depend on what a man is going to say. But, Lord, your prophet spoke about the greatest gift that there is. Father, the preacher will put himself one side so that you alone, Father, would address your, your, yourself to your children. Father, all the different situations. Father, we believe you are able to meet each and every one of them. Don't let us go back home the same way we came. Father, I pray that something happens while we are in your house tonight. Lord, I lay my hand upon this envelope that's been brought in by your believing children. You know the needs, you know the desires. Heavenly Father, you even know the request. I want to pray, Lord Jesus Christ, that you will supply their need, O oh God. We pray, Lord, that you respect this faith, Father God, and uh, we believe you are able to undertake for them. Give us a wonderful service in your presence. Father, all together we shall give thee all the praises and all the honor. Grant it, Lord, we pray, in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated tonight. Amen. We're so glad that we are in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. And we'd like to greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe you're all happy to be around. How many of you are happy to be in service? Amen. We're so glad that you can uh, break through the weather. Amen. That you could come through so that we can hear the word of the Lord again. Isn't the Lord wonderful tonight? Amen. We give him all the praises and all the honors. Amen. Just these few uh, announcements I'll make before we get into service tonight. This one is coming from Sister Mundua. Sister Church. I brought my mother to church. She needs prayer. She has got she's got pain in the kidney. She needs prayer to be delivered from all evil spirits. Amen. Ask a mother, sister, moon, but stay so we can record this. God bless you. Amen. 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 This one is coming from Sister Patience Mawango. This one is coming from Sister Patience Mawango. She said, Thank you very much for your prayers. I had a self trip to and from the UK. Uh, greetings from Blessing. Amen. Welcome back. Amen. God bless you. Praise God. Um, he is a thanksgiving from Sister Frank. Amen. I would like to thank the Lord Jesus for giving my husband Fred. Uh, 
believe we're going to enjoy tonight. Praise God. They are also taking care of all the different brethren from Zimbabwe in their church. Amen. Uh, including Sister Margaret, uh, the sister to Brother um, Morris. So Morris is not around. Sister Margaret and Brother Morris. Who is staying in Edinburgh. Edinburgh. Amen. So many of the brethren that's in 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 their church in Scotland. Amen. So we want to make sure we stand. We stand on holy ground. Amen. And we invite the minister. She come to me. Amen. We are standing. We are standing on holy ground. And I know. I said, 
Because we have a very little church in Scotland. That would probably all fit in that corner over there. But he didn't take me back. So I'm here because I'm trusting God. Amen. Because God is faithful. Amen. I want to thank Brother Chesa. It's 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 not an easy thing to give your pulpit to somebody else. Especially somebody you haven't heard preach before. <laughs> uh, but don't be afraid. <laughs> I believe the pillar of fire. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I believe the things the prophet said. And I guarantee you I won't bring anything new. I will just remind you of what the prophet said. Amen. Amen. When they, when they were in the wilderness, they had manna. The same food over and over. It was, it was sufficient. It was all they needed. You know what our prophet did? He stored up the food for us. So all we need to do is search the tapes. Touch God's inspiration for now. And that's enough. Amen. Amen. So thank you, Brother Chesa. It's a privilege. We appreciate Brother Chesa. He's been over to us quite a few times. And each time he came, he ministered blessings. That's why his name is Brother Blessing Chesa. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'm a bit nervous, so just forgive me. You pray for me, amen. It's God's work. So he's got to do it. So let's turn to our scriptures and our Bibles. I want to speak this tonight on a simple subject. I like things that are simple. I like things that are simple. Because it means everybody can access them. Things that are too complicated can confuse you. So I like simplicity. Because God is a God of simplicity. Amen. That's why the very clever people of the world really can't see it. Because God has healed it in simplicity. Amen. Amen. So let's turn to one verse in the Bible tonight. Revelations chapter 22 <coughs> and verse 17. Just a single verse. Before we read, let's bow and pray. <laughs> Blessed Lord Jesus, how we thank you, Lord, that we have an opportunity to gather, gather again in your name, in the precious name of Jesus Christ. You said that the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven, in earth, under the earth. Lord, we ask tonight that your presence will be here. You promised in the scriptures that we're two or three assembled in your name, there you are in your midst. Lord, we have come here assembling the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, may you fulfill your word and be amongst us and speak to us and minister to our hearts, Lord. Let the Holy Ghost tonight, Lord, move from seat to seat. Touch each one, Lord. Give them something that will help them along this journey, Lord. And have your way amongst us. Let the Holy Ghost have preeminence, Lord, and free course amongst your people to make yourself known to us in the reading of the word. Come now and bless this word, Father. May you take it, Lord, and break the bread of life to each one of us according to our needs. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. If you've got it, I'll read. <clears throat> it says, And the Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that heareth come, and let him that is athirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may take your seats. I want to speak about something simple tonight. I'm calling it the last masterpiece. Amen. Because I 
Because that's the masterpiece that's really important to us. You would know because we are students of the word and the message. That Brother Branham talked about the masterpiece. Of course, we are students of the word and the message. And he went into some crucial things for us in that message. And that's really the inspiration I'm following to bring you a little exhortation tonight. Amen. Amen. Now, a masterpiece is just a work of art. It's just a work of outstanding artistry. Or skill or workmanship. Sometimes it's an artist's best piece of work. That's what a masterpiece is. Now the brother has a picture for you of this masterpiece. I'm glad Brother Chesa had this because I just had the picture which he's going to put up in a moment. Now, that there is, uh, is meant to represent Moses. Can we see it okay? Ah, the picture is up. Yes. And that was a great artist called Michelangelo. And he was inspired to make this statue of Moses. Okay? Now, you and I never saw Moses. Because in his time there were no pictures. There weren't any photos, so we couldn't see what he, he looked like. But Michelangelo, the artist, he got inspired. Now, when he started, it was just a block of marble. If you like, think about a block of stone. But after working on it for years, he ended up with that. I think that's beautiful. But then that's just me. <laughs> I think that's really nice. You know, Brabram said some lovely things. He said God is in art. Real art. There's a lot of stuff that goes around today that they call art. That's just filth. But I like real art. That's real art. That takes skill. That takes patience. That takes a vision. There was something he had in his mind. And he was able to take a brick, a block that had nothing on it. And bring forth that thing. That image of Moses. So God is in art. I like art. I love to see a beautiful painting. I, I like taking photos. I love to see a beautiful photo of nature. Because God is the greatest artist there is. Amen. Amen. That's why the Bible says that we are wonderfully made. Because God is the one that designed us. Amen. Amen. Now, he also says something. God is in music. Good music. There's a lot of rubbish that the world plays. <laughs> and it has an influence on the people. Uh, so much filth. But you know, there is nothing like a good, real, old time inspired song. That cuts to your heart. That causes you to worship the Lord. That helps you forget about your problems. So God is also in music. Good music. Amen. God is in poetry. Some of the songs that we sing, they were written by people who were just writing a poem. Out of the love for the Lord. And then some musicians somewhere got an inspiration on them and they took the poem and they changed it into a song Amen, Amen. so God is in poetry God can inspire a songwriter God can inspire a teacher 
God can inspire a musician. God can inspire a song leader. God can also inspire a minister. And God can inspire the believer. Amen. Amen. Let's not put it up there for just the pastor. <laughs> or just the song leader. Or just the minister. It's for you. Newewo. God inspires the believer. What does the Bible say? It says we walk by faith. Not by sight. Satan is the opposite. He wants us to walk by the things that we see. He wants us to pay attention to the earthly things. But in God's eyes, that's the least important. Because God places value in your soul. Because that's the real you. Amen. Amen. So we must walk by inspiration. Brother Abraham preached a message called inspiration. And we all need inspiration. The minister cannot preach without inspiration. I was talking to a brother yesterday about preaching. And he's a pastor. And we're talking about inspiration. And you say, oh, you know, as a pastor, as, as a Bible student, you know about Daniel. You know about Moses. You know about Elijah. You know about all the great people in the Bible. But that doesn't mean you have a sermon. <laughs> because God has got to give the inspiration. If he doesn't give it, it just becomes a lecture. And that's of no good to you. And that's of no good to you. Amen. Amen. So we need inspiration. Some clever person said, if you are not inspired, you will expire. <laughs> so we need inspiration. Amen. Yeah, you need inspiration, I need inspiration. Amen. Amen. So coming back to this masterpiece, Brother Abraham said, that the thing that made it a masterpiece the thing that made it a masterpiece was that when Michelangelo had finished making this, he was so quickened, he was so convinced about what he had done that he wanted it to be real. So he smote it and said, speak. Because he had brought the vision in his mind to a reality in front of him. And it was so real he wanted it to speak. And Brother Branham, he said that is what, that was that thing, that strike that made it a masterpiece. Amen. We can't see that strike here. I think it was on the knee. Because of course they fixed it up. But that was the thing that made it a masterpiece. Amen. The fact that it was smitten. I want you to remember that because the Bible says in Isaiah 53 verse 10, Bible, Lord, Isaiah 53 verse 10 that yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed he shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Amen. Amen. So when God made his masterpiece, he smote it too. For the sake of his people. Now remember, he said God is the greatest artist. And God is doing something. God is building something. In God's mind, there is something that has to be formed. And all the time, God is in the process of making that thing to pass. Don't worry about the circumstances. One thing we have learned from this message is that God is always in control. Amen. 
Your circumstances might seem difficult. They might even seem impossible. But remember, God will never give you something that's too hard for you to bear. He said that in every circumstance, He will make a way out so that you might be able to bear it. Amen. That's the way out. That you are able to bear it. Because some people can't bear it. And they leave. And they go somewhere else. But God's children, He has put something in them. The Bible says, we were talking about it last night, that many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivereth him out of them all. So don't worry about it too much. Just do what we have been taught to do. Go to the Lord in prayer. Cast your cares upon him. He cares for you. He will make a way out. Amen. So a masterpiece. God has been in the presence of making masterpieces. If you look in the Bible, right back there in Genesis, Genesis, the first thing we see is that God started creating. Amen. He created a heaven, created an earth. Made so many other things. And then right at the end of the creation, he made his masterpiece. That was Adam. That was God's first masterpiece. You know what? It was amazing. Because when he made Adam, he basically handed over to Adam. The Bible tells us that he brought the various things before Adam. He brought the, the animals before Adam. And Adam named them. And that's your name. So Adam saw the elephant. And he said, Elephant. Zito. 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 There you go. <laughs> he said, Elephant. Amen. Zito. And God said, That's exactly what I was thinking. Because God had made his masterpiece, handed over to Adam. It was now Adam's domain. The whole earth was Adam's domain. You know something about a domain? When you have a domain, then you have dominion. So we are taught and we learn in the Bible that Adam had dominion. Now, this was the first masterpiece. Remember, Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. God has not changed his mind about that. God was pleased with that masterpiece. He looked at it and he said it was good. Amen. Amen. Now you know up till today even science with all the talk that they put forth they still cannot fully understand the human body. It's God's creation. Yeah. And he took his time to make it right. Everything that he put in the body has its specific function. For the whole body to be healthy and work well, everything has got to work just right. Amen. So Adam had dominion. Adam, I know, Tony. The Bible tells us in Romans that the whole creation is waiting for what? Manifestation of the sons of God. Adam was the son of God. Adam, I the Bible says in the generations, Adam, Adam, the son of God. Amen. Amen. So he had dominion. If he was walking in the garden and he saw a tree somewhere he didn't like it, he could speak to that tree and move it. That was his dominion. He could be free with the animals. Command them wherever he wanted. That was his God-given dominion. Amen. Amen. Remember, God gave it to him. Now, if God has restored his people, then surely that has got to be restored. Yeah? You read the message? 
You heard the things that God did in a son of man? You, you read the things that God did through our prophet? He had some dominion, didn't he? So God restored that. Now, too many people are interested in having dominion over different things. They want to move buildings. They want to move cars. They, they want to cause people to disappear. But yet they have no control over themselves. God wants you to have dominion over this earth. Don't worry about the one out there. He will take care of it. Dominion over this earth. Your earth. Amen. If you can do that, and then you can manage outside there. Amen. You know the story of the man in the Bible with the talents? The master gave them a little each. And they went and used the little. And they managed it well. So he gave them more. And that's the same for us. God starts by giving you a little revelation. He starts by saying you need to repent of your sins. Because that's the Bible way. Amen. It says repent. So conviction sets in. You know something? If you don't repent, you won't go any further. There's nothing more for you. Because everything else is based on that start. But if you repent, he gives you a bit more. Amen. He says, be baptized. In Christian baptism. That's a bit more. Because you have accepted the first. So you get a bit more. Amen. Progressive revelation, more and more every time. That's how God works. So if you want dominion over the outer earth, get dominion over this earth that you have. Amen. This bag of bones, get dominion over this earth. And then when God has confidence that you can't have dominion over this earth, then he will let you have dominion over the things out there. Amen. Amen. Brother Abraham preached a message one time. He called it the mighty conqueror. And he said something really, really, really good. He said that 33 years old, Napoleon, Napoleon Bonaparte, the great emperor. Napoleon Bonaparte, Mutongi Mukuru, a Greek. He had conquered all the world of his time. Anga Tonga Nigazose, Pasirose. And yet he died a drunk. As Akafari Chitakwa. Conquered everything. Aga Tonga Zose. But could not conquer himself. As Agatha Zabusi Tonga. And he said, Jesus Christ. As Jesus Christ. At 33 years old. He had conquered himself. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, Bible note. in Proverbs 16 32, Proverbs 16 verse 32, He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So you've got to get that self in control. Remember, this flesh of ours is not yet redeemed. Brother Brown says we backslide every day. So every day we are fighting and battling to keep it in subjection. To keep it under the spirit of God in us. So that we can live that Christian life. Amen. Amen. So God took his first masterpiece. Adam. Adam. And he smoothed Adam. And got out of him. Like he, got he got Eve. He got a bride. And he put them together. In the garden of Eden. As the Bible teaches. And he went to rest. Because the Bible says he rested from his works. He had finished all that he needed to do. He had handed over control to Adam. Amen. Amen. Uh, and that's what Christianity is all about. It's about you resting from your works. Yeah? And Amen. letting Christ exercise his works. Yeah. Like Paul said, it's no longer I that live. But Christ, Christ that lives 
in me. Amen. Amen. So while God was resting, the devil was knocking. The devil came in. And he came in and caused confusion. And he came in and he murdered that masterpiece. Yeah. God's son Adam. Yeah. And his wife Eve. He was mad. Because the devil came in. Now God did something. When he created Adam. He put him behind the word of God. He put him behind the word of God. He put him behind the word of God. That was Adam's protection. That's still your protection. Amen. Amen. God's word is still true. God has not changed his mind about his word. The Bible is still the believer's protection. It gives us our boundaries. Amen. Amen. We're not trying to see how far we can get off. We can, we're trying to see how far we can keep away. Don't see how far you can go before you fall in sin. Don't see how far you can go before you fall in sin. Don't see how far you can go before you fall in sin. Don't see how far you can go before you fall in sin. Don't see how far you can go before you fall in sin. Don't see how far you can go before you fall in sin. Don't see how far you can go before you fall in sin. Don't see how far you can go he says abstain from all appearance of evil. Amen. That's very important. That means that if there's a question in your mind about it, as the prophet said, leave it alone. Amen. Amen. That will keep you out of trouble. My wife went to a boarding school. And it was a girls' school. And you know how it is in life. The girls and the boys, they like experiments. So they gave them a trick. They told them how to deal with the boys. They said, if you don't like the way they are acting, if you don't like the way they are acting, if you don't like the way they are acting, if you don't like the way they are acting, if you don't like the way they are acting, remember, Satan is very clever. What was Eve's problem? It wasn't that she didn't know what God has said. It was that she stopped to listen to reason. Amen. Amen. So just say no. <laughs> no excuse is needed. <laughs> because if you can give an excuse, Satan can always talk you out of that excuse. Amen. Amen. So God's word is our boundary. It protects us. It keeps us safe. Amen. Amen. It's the believer's portion. Brother Brown said that God's word will defeat Satan anywhere, anytime, on any ground. We still have that word with us, saints. So let's use it. Amen. The sword of spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. Amen. So when Satan murdered this first masterpiece, did God give up? He didn't give up. Now that's the real Christian spirit. Amen. Now when you make a mistake or when you fall, you don't stay down. No. The true Christian gets up. Gets back in the battle. And fights on. That's the nature of God. When his masterpiece was mad, he said he will start another masterpiece. Amen. Amen. So the first masterpiece passed. And he began to start a new masterpiece. Now too often, we are afraid that we're going to fail. We are afraid that what will happen if we do this and do that. What will happen if it doesn't work? That's not the way to go about it. We walk by faith. Put it before God. Check it with his word. If your motive is right, if your objective is right, if it's the right time for it, if you're the right person for it, God is bound to give you direction. Remember, he's our leader. So he will show us the way. So don't be afraid to fail. You know it's alright to fail. You know I'm a teacher back in the UK. I teach mathematics. 
Je dis ça mets. I love numbers. Je ne fais rien en bas. I love logic. Je ne fais rien mets. So sometimes you teach the kids something and they don't get it. But sometimes you show them examples. Try this one. Now, the people who struggle the most are the ones that are afraid to try what they have been shown. Just too afraid because you give them a formula. I tell them a formula is like a recipe. When you find all the ingredients and you put it together then you have a nice place of sadza. <laughs> Some good food, eh? <laughs> when you follow the recipe right that's what it is. It's a formula. Yeah? When you get the formula you find all the things put it inside and out comes the answer. But if they are afraid to apply that single step, then they struggle with the whole thing. And sometimes, sometimes, that's the problem with some Christians. They are afraid to try. Because they are afraid that they would fail. Don't worry, saints. God has got you. Do all that you can by the word. Commit it to God. And God will take care of you. Amen. Brother Ram said something, a nice little quote I'll read for you here. Now it's the first time I'm preaching here. Uh, so I'm just going to make it clear to you. I love quotes. Yes, I, I'm a preacher who doesn't have a message of his own. I'm just trying to remind you of the things that our prophet said. Uh, because I believe that God vindicated that prophet enough for us. Yeah, that we should have no question about his ministry. Now, of course, sometimes we don't understand it the same. That's alright. It's God's business to make sure that this bride will be in unity. It's his business to make sure that we get the right understanding. Because every single one of us can really quote and understand it in a different way. So we just have to trust God that he will do it. So I love reading quotes. Uh, I know Brother Chesa. And I know he loves the quotes too. I know he has trained you like that. Yeah? Because it's okay if I say it. But I think it's better if you see the prophet saying it himself. Amen. So my first quote. Uh, 1954, Redemption by Power. 1954, Redemption by Power. Redemption by Power. Paragraph 410, 401, sorry. He says. Paragraph 401, That's what the trouble with the church today. It is scared to death you are going to make a failure. And it says, how can you fail when you are in Christ? You can't fail. It says you've got everlasting life. All demons in hell can't shake you. You've got everlasting life. Jesus said so. So don't be scared of failure. You say, well, I'm afraid I'll get fanatic. He says, I'd rather have a little fanaticism than to sit still and do nothing. He says, I sure would. Amen. Amen. Yes. You love that? Yes. So let's do something for the Lord. Amen. Let's exercise our faith. Amen. Let's live the right life. Let's do the right thing by the word. Let's apply the things that the message has taught us. And God will bless us for it. So after this first masterpiece was marred by Satan, God immediately started on a new masterpiece. Amen? This was the second masterpiece. And it was going to be greater than the first masterpiece. But we have the same attributes. The same characteristics. Like Adam. Sir Adam. He would have dominion. Over the earth. Like Adam. Sir Adam. He would smite it. 
to get a bride out. Amen. Amen. Now, he started this next masterpiece in Abraham. Okay, now remember when God spoke to Adam, he gave Adam a covenant, if you like, an agreement. Yeah, in Genesis 2. Genesis 2. He told Adam, Adam, he says, if you keep this word, you'll be okay. But if you don't keep the word, he won't be okay. But now when he goes to Abraham, it's a different agreement. It's a new agreement. It's an unconditional agreement. When he speaks to Abraham, in Genesis 12, he says, I, and in I will do this. I will give you the land. I will take you there. I will give you a son. I will give you an heir. He was all God. An unconditional covenant. All that Abraham had to do was to believe God and act on it. There's something we see today. Many people say they believe the message. What does that really mean? What does it mean to believe the message? If you say you believe the message and you have not repented of your sins, do you believe the message? If you believe the message and you are not baptized in Christ's name, do you believe the message? No! Brother Abraham told us that those things are still valid. Yeah. He did not take them away. Repentance is still needed. Water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ is still needed. Sanctification is still needed. The Holy Ghost is still required. He never took those things away. The seals didn't take those things away. The amazing revelation the prophet God didn't take that away. We still need those basics. 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 We still need Stop telling you know. Stop telling these women how to dress and you know. Stop telling them about baptism and, and he said, just teach them to speak in tongues. <laughs> you know what he said? He said, how can I teach them algebra when they don't know their ABCs? Yes, we need it. The ABCs. It That's right. Amen. <laughs> you know what I said? The was. Always believe Christ. Amen. Amen. Always believe Christ. The revealed word of God. That's our ABC. Amen. Amen. You need to start there. And then God will take you further. Amen. 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 So, we too have an unconditional covenant. So this second masterpiece that God started building in Abraham was based on an unconditional covenant. It means there was, God was going to do it anyway. In spite of Abraham, God was going to fulfill his word. Amen. Amen. And that's the covenant that we have today. It's unconditional. Because Jesus Christ has already done all the work. He died on Calvary. You don't need to die. God made a way through Jesus Christ. God was in Christ. Reconciling the world to himself. And that's you and I. Your salvation is not based on your experience. It's not based on whether you can speak in tongues. It's based on what Jesus Christ did. Because the Bible says, whosoever believes, Amen? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever 
You can put your name in there. Whosoever believes should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Amen. The only question you need to ask is what does believe mean? <laughs> Amen. 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 So God was building this second masterpiece. How much time have I got? <laughs> Alright. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, so God was building the second masterpiece starting in Abraham and the different patriarchs. So Abraham was a type of faith. Amen. Amen. You know what the Bible says about faith? He says that without faith it is impossible to please God. Amen. Amen. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So that's a starting point. The Bible also says by grace you are saved through faith. So in order to have salvation we need at least two things. It's a simple formula. Two things. We need grace and we need faith. Amen. Amen. Now the Bible also says that grace of God has already appeared to all men. So one thing is already available. So the only other thing that we need is faith. Amen. And what does the Bible say about faith? He said that faith cometh by hearing. That's right. Hearing by the word of God. That's why you need a preacher. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So that he can show you the word. And God can give you revelation. Because faith is based on the word of God. Amen. Amen. To the world is foolishness. But that's God's chosen way. You need a preacher. Now many places in the world the people don't go to church. They sit at home and they play the tapes. Amen. They sit at home and play the tapes. And they say that's okay, you know, it's a prophet. But, but you know that's contrary to the message. Because the prophet told us to go to church. Yeah, he, said he, he said if you don't find a church that believes the same as you. Says, find one that believes something that you do. I'm go to church. Amen. So not going to church, even if you are listening to the message, it's not the message. Because the message tells you to go to church. Amen. 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 God has provided a five-fold ministry. For what purpose? The perfecting of this bride. So you need to go to church, thanks. That's where God is working. That's where God has chosen to work. That's his provided way. Amen. Amen. So, God started in Abraham. Faith. Isaac. Isaac. Love. Rudo. Jacob. Jacob. Election. Kusanangurwa. I think election is an amazing thing. Look at Jacob, my goodness. He was a real con man. That guy could con you off the coat of your back. He was a real con man. You have to admit it. Yeah? Have you ever checked out what he did with Laban? Have you read your Bible? That guy could really 419 you. But here's election. When they were born, what does the Bible say? God said this. Jacob, Jacob, have I loved? Esau, Esau, have I hated? Esau was a gentleman. He was a good child. Read your Bible. He helped his daddy. His daddy loved him. But God chose. Jacob. Don't you love that? I mean, look at us. What could you possibly have done to deserve God's favor? And yet, God chose you. Amen. 
God chose you. In spite of yourself. Some people were running away from it. But yet, God chose them. Amen. 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 That's our type, Jacob, in the Bible. And Joseph. Joseph. Perfection. Amen. Amen. He has almost nothing against him on his record. I said almost nothing. Because outside of Jesus Christ, they all have something against their record. Because they were all born in sin. Shaped in iniquity. Come to the world speaking lies. So Joseph was, he had perfection. Joseph, I Because there was almost nothing against his record. So God was building up, building up his masterpiece. And he starts from the ground, from the feet, going upwards. Amen? Amen. Now your feet are your foundation. Yes? They are your basis. And your foundation is important. Now, this beautiful building, if the foundation is wrong, we are all at risk. Yes? yes. So they have to make sure that everything in the foundation is correct. Because if it isn't, the building is potentially useless. Amen. So as a Christian, you need to have the right foundation. So, get your repentance right. Get your baptism right. Make sure you go through the right process. Yeah, be sanctified. Live holy. Because the Bible says, without holiness, no one shall see God. So we still need holiness. Make sure you get the Holy Ghost. Because there are many holy people out there. Even Judas Iscariot was holy. Even Peter was holy. But you know what Christ said to him? When you are converted. So make sure you get into the upper room. Make sure you get the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Because we all need a mind change. Amen? Amen. Now we think different. The Bible says our ways are not his ways. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. So you need a new mind that can think like God. That can follow the way of God. So we need to get those basics right. We find today many Christians are very unsettled very shaky very unsure and when you check the root of it there's something wrong with the foundation there's something that wasn't done right and that needs to be sorted before they can move on amen, amen. so get the foundation right we don't need uh, uh, we, we don't need Big amazing things yet. We need to get the right foundation first. Because when the foundation is right, God can build on it. Amen. Amen. So, like I said before, know your ABC. Always believe Christ. Our cousins, our cousins, they found out. That they could have all the amazing, fantastic things. And that if the foundation wasn't right, it didn't do them much good. They got the crowds in. They got the crowds in. But they compromised on the basics. But now it's a whole big mess. And they are giving a bad name to Christianity. It's unfortunate. But I think it's meant to be that way. Amen. Amen. Brother Brown said something really nice. He says you need a counterfeit. To show what the real bill is. Amen. 
So there's so much counterfeit Christianity today. There's so much money making Christianity today. That is not the real thing. But that just shows that there's a real thing somewhere. And that's what we want, amen. We want the real thing. Amen. Amen. Are we still together? Okay. So this foundation was built in the patriarchs. And then, and then this body, he started building up the body of this new masterpiece. And that, was, that was based on the judges and the prophets. The Bible calls the men of whom the world was not worthy. That's what it says in Hebrews 11. Of whom the world was not worthy. But each one of them was assigned to their generation. Each one of them was putting forth an image of God. Each one of them was a masterpiece in his own right. But None of them was perfect. Satan was able to mar every single one of them. Think about our great prophet Moses. The Bible says he was the meekest of all men on the earth. But, but why did Moses not make it to the promised land? See, they were all imperfect. There was something wrong. We found out that he had a little anger issue. Yeah, because the people got on his case. The people got on his case. They were continually complaining. Continually bringing trouble. Continually doubting God. And he made Moses angry. I hope you are good to your pastor. <laughs> yes, I feel for him. No one's good Somebody said big church, many problems. <laughs> little, little church, small problems. <laughs> big church, big problems. <laughs> so I hope you are good to him. Amen. Yeah, I hope you don't let him do all the work. I hope you read your Bible and pray. Amen. Amen. I hope you listen to the prophet. I hope you listen to the messages yourself. I hope you read the books. Yeah, like those Christians in the book of Acts. When something was spoken to them, the Bible says that they went and checked it out. Amen. So I hope you are kind to your pastor. That was a problem with Moses. They caused him too much trouble. They caused him to get angry. And for that little moment, when he failed to do exactly what God has said because of anger, it missed the promise. But he didn't make it to the promised land. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. So all these masterpieces throughout the ages, there was something imperfect. You can have many examples. Every single one of them. Yeah, Joseph, we have already spoken about, he told a little lie, remember? Joseph, when he was trying to get land for his family. A lie is a lie, right? <laughs> yeah, you can have many examples. There's nothing good about a lie. Some people say, oh no, it's a little white lie. It's still a lie. It's the same spirit. Yeah? Uh, give me a thief anytime. But not a liar. A liar is pretty bad. You know, one of the things that sent Christ to his death was a false testimony. So lying is not good. So Joseph's little lie was a mark against him. Amen. 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 Yeah. David. David. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
people say, oh, you know. But Shiba should not have been there showering. But Shiba, he must say again, I ain't kissing. I go from sorry, Papa. For David to look at, that's one David to ask right? Shiba. Some other people say, Mum, I don't go out to you. David should not have been looking. David, I have another snow tag. So it depends on which side you are on. Saka, no, and no good to look at it. What did the end time prophet say? Prophet, I'm with a cat. He said, Look away, sons of God. Amen. Amen. Look away, sons of God. That's why he had a cross in his own car. Just look at that cross. Because the streets are filled with filth. You think it's bad here? Yeah, it's not bad. In Scotland, in the UK, where it's cold. Scotland, UK, People still go out half naked. And it's on the billboards. And it's everywhere. And it's a disgrace to the nation. The Bible said that righteousness exalts the nation. But that sin is a reproach to any people. Amen. Amen. So David had that small problem. And that was a mark against him. Amen. Amen. He was still a man after God's own heart. But every single one of these masterpieces, there was a mark against them. I hope you are not falling asleep on me yet. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, Amen. Amen. So, God completed all this body work. And he came to the head of it. Now physically, the head is the thing that really controls the body. Yes. Amen. And the Bible says that, doesn't it? It says that Christ is there. Head of and the church. Yeah. Uh, the bride is the body. Yeah. The body. But Christ, Christ is the head. Amen. Amen. So God was building this masterpiece, and He came up to the head of the masterpiece. And here's what God said about that masterpiece. In Isaiah 53. Let's read it. I'll try and be quick. <laughs> Isaiah 53 says, Who have believed our reports? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He have no form, nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. What a thing. No beauty that we should desire him. How different God thinks to us. Now any normal man he tries to make things as beautiful as he can. That's what Cain did. You know when I was in Sunday school, when I was a child, they told us that God did not accept Cain's sacrifice because he brought filthy things before God. Now I found out later on when I got to the message that that's not true. Cain brought the best that he had. The problem God had not given him revelation. So there is nothing that he would have done to make it acceptable. Without revelation. Now Abel brought a lamb. Adam. Abel. And he had to kill it brutally. But it was based on revelation. That's why God accepted it. Amen. Amen. So God doesn't necessarily work in that kind of beauty. The Bible tells us that our own beauty should not be the outward one. Now, that's no excuse not to look good. 
At least according to the scriptural lines. That's no excuse. But he says that our own beauty should be the inner beauty. The one that comes from within. That's the one that God respects. Amen. Amen. So God doesn't think like us. I'll go on in verse 3. He is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. In other words, Jesus Christ had many problems. He was acquainted with grief. Yeah. Grief, sorrows was Christ's friend. Or acquaintance if you want. That's what the Bible says. Amen. Now we sing that song, Must I go to the sky without bearing my own burdens? You're not going to go free. There is a part for you to play. Amen. 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 You have got burdens to bear. There is a part for you to play. Amen. 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 Now we're talking about that last night. Now we said you've got predestinated trials. Not because God hates you. Not because you have sinned. But because that's God's way of carving out a masterpiece. So problems will come. Troubles will come. But remember, God will not give you what you cannot bear. God always has a way out for you. You just need to pray and find it. Amen. 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 And we hid as it were our faces from him. The second part of verse 3. He was despised. And we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs. And carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken. Smitten of God. And afflicted. But. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord have laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. Yet, yet he opens not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before his hashiras. He's dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was his grave. And he made his grave with the wicked. And with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence. Neither was any deceit in his mouth. And here's the masterpiece part. Yet it As pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall, he shall see his seed he shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to read 
That's the head of this masterpiece that God was building. The second masterpiece. Nothing the way you and I would have thought it out. Our thoughts are not God's thoughts. You know, if you had to choose a church, if you had to choose a bride, I probably won't be in it. If I had to choose, yeah. you may not be in it. But God is the one that does the choosing. Amen. Amen. That's why by faith, we can all be in it. Yeah. Not just the pastor. Not just the preacher, not just the song leader, but anyone that will come God's provided with. Amen. Amen. It's open to us all. Like Jacob said, there is room for all. Amen. You can come in. Don't leave it too late. So the Bible says in Colossians 2 verse 9, Colossians 2 verse 9 about this masterpiece for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Brother Abraham said it very nicely. He said Jehovah of the old Jehovah is Jesus Christ of the new. He also said this all that God was he poured into Christ and all that Christ was he poured into the church Amen. Amen I hope you can see where I'm going with this yes <laughs> so God handed over everything to Jesus Christ Amen in Matthew 28 it says when Christ was about to leave, Christ he said that all power, all power in heaven, on earth, is given to me. My, ah. what a masterpiece. Adam had power over the whole earth. That was his domain. That was his dominion. But this second masterpiece, Jesus Christ, Christ, all power in heaven, all power in earth, there is nothing too big for him. He's got all the power. Amen. Amen. That's why he could crush Satan. Because God gave him all the power. Amen. Amen. In Colossians 1 verse 15, Colossians 1 verse 15, talking about Christ, <coughs> he says, who is the image of the invisible God? The firstborn of every creature. So, if you want to see God, look at Jesus Christ. Is that what he said? When he was talking to Philip, he said, Philip, have I been this long with you? You don't know who I am. Yeah. Since if you have seen the Father, you've seen me. Amen. Amen. So Jesus Christ was the image of God. Jesus Christ was the image of God. Jesus Christ. If you want to see God, look at Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The revealed Word of God. Look Jesus at Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, let's take that a step further. Now, Jesus Christ said, because people would not believe him, he says, that's okay. If you don't believe me, that's fine. However, believe the works. Is that what he said? Your works prove your faith. Your works are just your action, right? The things that you do, they prove the faith that you have. So Jesus Christ said, I know you guys say I've grown up amongst you. And I'm just the son of one of your daughters. So you, you can't believe me to be the son of God. But you know what? He had great works in their midst. And he said, if you don't believe me, believe those works. But they had no choice. There was no escape. So let's bring it home. We believers, we got to get to a place where that's our testimony. Amen? Amen. There are sinners out there, they are not looking at whether you understand the seven seals or not. 
That is not their problem. Yeah? It's only a problem for believers. <laughs> That's not a sinner's problem. He is looking at your life. Day after day. Day in, day out. Are there works that he can believe? Because we should be able to say the same thing, right? Here's our example. Can I walk up and say, you know, it's okay not to believe me? <laughs> that I'm a child of God. But you have seen my life. You are forced, you have to believe the life. Amen. Amen. That's the greatest testimony there is. No testimony. A life, a Christian life lived before the people. Not all this talk, 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 talk. He doesn't do anything. It's the life that counts. Amen. Amen. And remember, only Christ can live a Christian life. So if you are trying to live a Christian life, you are bound to fail until Jesus Christ comes in. When he does, then you don't have to work it out. Like I was saying last night, a ship doesn't go to the market to buy wool. Because wool is part of it. He can't stop it from coming. He <laughs> just produces the wool. Why? Say. Because it's a sheep. Why? So it's a Christian. So does it Christ? Can't stop it. The works have to follow. Because it's Christ doing the works. Amen. Amen. We too have to be images of Jesus Christ. We've got to be reflections. We've got to show the world what Christianity means. The seven seals are good. I love the, I love the seven seals. I love all the mysteries Abraham came and unfolded. But at the end of the day, that Christian life is what counts. We are meant to be the salt of the earth, aren't we? And what did Christ say about salt? Salt has lost its taste. It's of no use. It tramples on the feet. It's not even good. It's not even good. Amen. That's what happens when people are searching for this mystery and that mystery. And cannot shake each other's hands in love. Brother, that's not Christianity. It doesn't matter how much of the mysteries we know. We've got to get the basics right. Amen. The Bible says that God is love. And Christ told us, by this shall all men know you are my disciples. When you know the mysteries, did he say that? No. No. When you do miracles, no. When, when you plant the seed until you can buy a jet plane, no. He said, when you love, have love one for another. It's amazing because people go and, you know, they get the mysteries and they get all hooked up in arguments. And it becomes so bad yes. that they forget the basic Christianity. To love one another. As the Bible teaches. Amen. Amen. So, the second masterpiece. Now, Adam was a reflection of God, right? Adam, I, 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 yes. The Bible says that God made Adam in his image. Yeah. Read, read your Bible when God created Adam in Genesis 1. Let us make man in our image. So he made Adam, spirit Adam, of course, because God is a spirit, right? That was the image. And then later on in chapter 2, he formed Adam out of the earth. Okay, so Adam was the image of God. Yeah. Now we know that God has his three offices, right? God above us. God with us. God in us. Yes. And we find that Adam was the same kind of man. He had a body. 
just to conquer the earth. That's what the body was for. It wasn't to lead him. You are not to be led by your flesh. The body was just to interact with the earth. And then he had a spirit as well. And then he had a soul. Which is where God wants to live. Amen. Amen. So Adam was in the image of God. The Bible teaches us. And so was Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was a reflection of God. Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. The Bible says that, doesn't it? Yes. In John chapter 1. John chapter 1. And the word was made flesh. It says that in the beginning was the word, the word was God, and the word was God. And then it says that same word was made flesh. Amen? Amen. So Jesus Christ, this masterpiece, just like Adam, Adam was reflecting, showing the world who God is. Amen? Amen? And that's what we two are meant to be. We are meant to reflect God. Show the world what Christ means. That's what your life is meant to be. Amen. So, Adam put behind the word. For protection. Adam, put behind the word for protection. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. He was the word. Amen. He didn't have to be put behind the word. He was the word. Amen. Yeah, you know how Christ came speaking to the people. At each time they would challenge him and tell him what the law said and the law this. But he was the word. And they say, you know, you know, it is written, it is written. You know what he said? He said, sure, it's written. And he says, but I say unto you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. This was a different level now, yeah? You know, they came and said, oh, you know, Moses, 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 this, Moses, that. You know what he told them? If you believe Moses, you will believe me. Because Moses talked about me. Amen. So all these different masterpieces, they were looking to this great masterpiece, Jesus Christ. God walking amongst us. Amen. Amen. Now, this masterpiece was so perfect. Like Adam. Adam, that we read in the Bible that it pleased God to smite it. Like he did to Adam. When he smote Adam, he got out his bride. He got out Eve. And this time, he smote Jesus Christ to get out his bride. Amen? Amen. The same type. The same thing, God doing the same thing again. Which takes me to the most important masterpiece now. Okay? Amen. If you are falling asleep, now is the time to wake up. <laughs> because this is really the, the real beat, okay? I was just coming up there. <laughs> no, don't be worried. I'll be finished soon enough. <laughs> right, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. And we'll start at verse 18. You will talk about verse 18. <clears throat> God bless you all for being so patient with me. I'll read for you. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. It's talking about Jesus Christ here. Verse 19. Now therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Now listen closely to this part. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. In whom ye also are builded together for an habitation 
of Ma, God through the Spirit. A few things here. There's a foundation. Yeah? And Paul talks about a foundation. Now what did he say about a foundation? He said the apostles and the prophets. Amen? So if you can find a God-given apostle and a God-given prophet, there's blessing in there for you. Amen? That's why I trust all the things that my prophet said. Even when I don't understand them, I know that God vindicated him. Yeah? And the people who are questioning about what things that he said, I don't see where God vindicated any of them. So God vindicated my prophet. So even if I don't understand what he said, I'll do what he said. Just say what the tape says. Now, how you deal with that is your problem. <laughs> my job is to repeat what he said. Even when I don't understand it, I believe it. You, you find out that if you have that attitude, it will not be long before the understanding comes. Amen? Amen. Yeah, you know when Christ had his disciples, and one day he decided to say something that was really difficult. He told them that they have to eat his flesh and drink his blood. And the Bible says that was a very hard thing. And he says that a lot of them left him. Now, the Bible calls them disciples. Huh? He says they left him. But then there were a few who stayed back. Oh, I would have loved to be one of those ones. Why did they stay back? Did they understand it? They didn't. You read your Bible. Peter didn't understand it. The rest of them didn't understand it. But look at what they did. They were sure about something. They were sure about God's vindication. They were sure that this was the Christ. So even though they didn't understand what he said, they stayed with him. Amen. Amen. Now, if that's your attitude to the message, God will bless you. And it won't be long before he brings that understanding that you're looking for. Amen? Christ never asked, do you understand? Read your Bible. He didn't. He said, do you believe? That's all God requires. Amen? You believe, God will take care of the rest. So Paul was talking about the foundation and then not long about that he talks about the building and this is a special building because he calls it the holy temple of the Lord. Now we know from the Old Testament that God is not interested in this, you know, just the building. And I do like the building. I'm not saying this anything against the building. <laughs> I like the building. But God is not interested in dwelling in this kind of thing. Yeah. In man -made hands. What does the Bible tell us about the temple? Your temple. You are the temple of God. Amen? Amen. The throne of God in the heart of man. That's where God wants to dwell. Yeah, in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's where God wants to dwell. So Paul here is talking about this building that God is building. And he says that we are also built together for an habitation through the Spirit of God. So God's spirit wants to dwell in us. God wants to work through you. God wants to speak through you. Amen? Amen. God wants to heal through you. God wants to work through you. Amen. Let me read you a quote. 1964, the identified masterpiece of God. Rabram is talking here about this masterpiece. And he says, now, for nearly 2,000 years, God has been trying to cut him a masterpiece bride. 
called a church. That's right. How does God do it? He does it by his never changing method, the word. God never changes his method. Anybody, you can. You change, I change. Time changes, the world changes. But God doesn't change. He's perfect. He doesn't change. And the way he does anything the first time, he does it every time the same way. He saved man one time because he repented. That's the way he will save man again. He healed one man because he had faith. He will heal the next one on the same basis. He never changes his way. Because see, he is sovereign. And he is eternal. He is infinite. Omnipresent, omniscient. He is God. And therefore, he doesn't have to ask anybody for wisdom. He doesn't have to wait till he learns more. He don't need a new degree. He's perfect. And whatever degree, and whatever thing he makes first, his first decisions remains the same forever. It can never be changed. Oh, how glad I am. And he goes on in paragraph 123, he says, And when he made his first masterpiece, he put him behind the word. When he made his second masterpiece, he was the word. He was the word, not behind the word. But he was the word. God never changes his plan. That's exactly what he started off to do his first church with. The word. Now, God, the word in the beginning, he was independent from all other. Everything else, all other people. Now, I don't mean to say this to be different. Listen carefully. God is a segregationalist. You know what you talk about integration? God's a segregationalist. He certainly does. He separates his people from the world. He separated Israel, his nation. He is trying to separate his church from the world. But the church wants to go on with the world. But his people is still segregated. Segregated to him. Who is he? The world. Amen. Amen. God is still separating. The guy that was building this masterpiece, Michelangelo, there was a lot of cutting and shaping going on. Because he had, to get, he had to get rid of all the things that were not part of his plan. Remember, we're talking about God being the great artist. He is doing the same thing to his bride today. That means you and I cutting off the world separating us setting us apart the Bible calls us a peculiar people we are not like the world we don't think like them we don't talk like them we don't dress like them we are different people from a different place the Bible says that here we have no continuing city but we seek one which is to come so this year is not our country. Abraham's wife asked him one time. He said, so, oh, are we not Americans? He said, oh, no, we are not Americans. We come from a different kingdom. So I can say the same tonight, can't I? We are not really Zimbabweans. We come from a different kingdom. Amen. Amen. That's why the word it supersedes all our cultures. Amen? 
Now you, you find out if you travel a little that everywhere in the world they have their little cultures. I haven't picked up any here since I came. But I'm sure you have little, little things in your culture. That somebody different, maybe a foreigner, will find it strange and illogical. If you came to Scotland where I live, I find that they have some very strange cultures. And some strange traditions. Now, I don't have a problem with tradition as long as it's not against the Bible. But when it comes in conflict with the Bible, just remember. We come from a different nation. nation. And these are the laws of the land. So it doesn't matter what it is, it's got to bow to the Bible. Amen. 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 Different cultures doesn't really count. When we come to the house of God, or as a Christian in our lives, the final word, the absolute. It's what the Bible says. Amen? Amen. Now, many of us didn't understand what that even means. That's why God sent the prophet. To show us the basics. That's why he told us how to dress. Amen? Amen. He told us how to live our daily lives. That's why we needed a prophet. Because that had been lost. Now, God has been building this masterpiece for over 2,000 years. 2000. This masterpiece has got to be perfect. God doesn't do anything halfway. God doesn't make halfway Christians. God doesn't deliver you halfway. There's a wonderful message Brother Branham preached. It's called a total deliverance. You cannot be half Christian. It doesn't work. You either are a Christian or you're not. And if you are a Christian, then you have met God's requirements. You have come God's provided way. And if you have done that, in spite of what you think, don't let the devil take, talk you out of it. If you have come the way of the word and met God's requirements, don't let Satan talk you out of it. Amen. Amen. So God, for this masterpiece, He put gifts in the church. Okay? Amen. And one of the key gifts that He put in this church he put a fivefold ministry. The prophet, you know the Abraham, he says the prophet is a special person. Yeah, because he goes out there, you know, he sees the breath of God full before it's even full. Yeah, because you know, Abraham told us, you know, the prophet, his unconscious, his subconscious and conscious are. There's no difference. <laughs> so he, he doesn't have to go to sleep to see his vision. It's there in front of him. And he taught us about the apostle. This is a special person too. He goes out there by the inspiration of God. He knows how to set the church in order. And he says the pastor is a special person. <laughs> He thinks he can put up with force that nobody else can put up with. He says he's like the ox of the church. The burden bearer. That's why I keep saying that I hope you are good to your pastor. <laughs> because you need to protect the gift of God so that you can get the best from it. He also said the evangelist is a special person. He comes into the city like a, a fireball. And he preaches repentance and preaches the gospel. And the people come and repent it. That's his job. Now, if you had an evangelist every Sunday, 
<laughs> we won't make much progress. <laughs> because we'll be here repenting every day <laughs> of the things we didn't repent of. <laughs> That's why he needs to come once in a while. Yeah, when, when there's been progress made in the church, and, and there's some coming in that need that fire, he also said, the teacher is a special person. He can take the word of God and take the little things and make them so simple that the people can understand them. Amen? So God put these gifts in the church for a purpose. The Bible tells us for edifying. The fivefold is there to help you. It's not there to cut you apart. When he does that, then there's a question if it's of God. But the fivefold ministry is there to help you. Your pastor is there to help you. Amen. Amen. This masterpiece, this, remember the last masterpiece I'm talking about? This is the masterpiece of pride that we have read about. She must reflect the same thing as the first two. She must be a reflection of Jesus Christ. She must be an image of God. Her life must tell what God is. Just like the first and the second did. We already read that God uses his word to cut out this masterpiece into the right shape. We find today that many people are taking the message and trying to force it to fit their ideology. Trying to make it fit their doctrine. Trying to cut it so that it suits them. God doesn't do that. God cuts the man to fit his word. Not the other way around. Amen? Amen. So don't try and make the message say something it doesn't say. God will cut you change your ideas your ideology your theology your thinking to be in line with his word. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells us that that word is a two-edged sword. Bring in separation, yes? That's what we read there. The Bible tells us, you know, God is, Brother Brown said, God is segregationalist. He separates. And that's God's word. It cuts and separates. Amen. Amen. Now, this bride, she also has an unconditional covenant given to her. In the message, the unconditional covenant in 1954, Abraham speaking, paragraph 214, he says, Oh, I hate to butcher anything up like that, but I hope you get what I mean. God has made an unconditional covenant. He swore by the death of Jesus Christ. He sends the Holy Ghost back upon you to be a confirmation that the covenant is made with you. And he says, brother, I don't want the devil to rob you out of that. He says, don't think I'm crazy. I guess I may be. But let me alone. I'm happy crazy there. He says, look, let me tell you something. I'd rather be this way than the way I used to be. He says, listen, you are the covenant people of God. Who's you? Who's talking to him? He says, I need to him alone. You are the covenant people. Amen. God tore Christ apart at Calvary. Making the covenant, swearing by himself. 
And he took a body up into heaven, which will return someday. But the spirit he gave back to lead the church. The same life that was in Christ Jesus is in the church tonight by the Holy Ghost. Doing and acting and performing the same things he did when he was here. It says, you have received it. You've got the covenant. It's written to you, swore by God. You can't fail. That makes the devil mad. Show us when we realize who you are. He says, now, the covenant people, he said this, whatsoever things you desire, as a Christian, when you pray, believe you receive it. Just hold right on to it. It will be given to you. Is that right? It will be given. Just hold right on to it. Because God has swore that he'd do it. Since I'm here in a confirmation, I'm going away back to my father. And then the Holy Ghost will come and he will confirm everything I've said. He will be with you. He will continue this ministry until I return again. And here we are, sitting in the building tonight, feeling the same Holy Ghost that they felt on the day of Pentecost. The same Holy Spirit that led Abraham. The same Holy Ghost that performed the miracles in the early church. The same signs and wonders. The same baptism. The same results. What we got to worry about? God swore that he would do it. Can't lose, can't lose. God said so. Don't make any different what anybody else said. God said so. God bless you. And it goes on. Masterpiece bride. Don't worry, I'm almost finished. <laughs> now she too has got a good foundation like the first masterpiece and the second masterpiece a solid foundation we read the in Ephesians foundation of the apostles and Prophets. Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Now, Paul laid a solid foundation of the, for the church. He went and took things in the Bible and showed how those things, the Old Testament, were types of the New Testament. He said, he said so many things that he was inspired to say. He knew his office. He knew he was an apostle. If you read your Bible, sometimes Paul speaking, he says, This I say. And he says, Yet I. Not the Lord. When you read that, what do you do with it? Do you put it aside and say that's not the Bible? <laughs> because he said it himself, right? He says, oh, it's me saying this, not the Lord. Yeah, what do you do? Do you say, oh, that's not for me? No, you know that we are founded on the apostles and the prophets. You know that we have confidence in the ministry of Paul. So you know if he's saying this thing, he's inspired. So you know that there is something there that is true that's God given. So you know you have to accept it. Now, I don't have a problem applying the same thing to my prophet. Some people do because they read some things and they say, oh, this was just Abraham talking. That was inspiration. But hey, did God prove that was his prophet? Therefore, we need to consider it carefully. Some people find it very easy to throw away the things Abraham said. Because they think he wasn't inspired. I can't do that. God vindicated him. God told him things that he said sometimes I don't understand where they came from. But I have enough confidence. 
in God's vindication, in God's prophet, to know that how I can believe it. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I see people today they say, oh, Brother Abraham said this only once. People today say, Brother Abraham said this only once. And so I'm not going to take it. And sometimes I wonder, did God vindicate this person who's telling this to me? Is he better than the prophet? Or should I believe it? Stay with what the prophet said. Amen. Stay with what the prophet said. Apostles and prophets. A good foundation for the church. Now, this bride of Christ, this masterpiece bride, she will produce the same signs. The same things that were done back there that the other masterpiece did. Jesus Christ did great works among the people. And he said that those that believe will do even greater works. We know, of course, that means more works. Yeah? Our prophet explained that very clearly. And if, and if you check your Bible and check the meaning of those words, you find that it is spot on. It is exactly right. Yeah. Now, this last masterpiece, she was taken from his side. Remember the Bible says that when the, the pierced him, water blood spirit his bride came out from his side so because she was already part of him she has already been smitten Amen. Amen. God doesn't need to smite this masterpiece bride anymore. He's already done it. Amen. Now she will be his image. In other words, she will be the word of God. Jesus Christ is coming back for a word bride. A bride that is word upon word. Line upon line. Like Isaiah said. Precept upon precept. My pastor always said. He wanted a sin, sensible, solid Christian church. I always love that. That's what we should be. Well balanced believers. Know your Bible well. Be familiar with the things the prophet said. You know, I tell people these days, I don't really have time to read many novels. There are over a thousand messages. I haven't listened to all of them. There's too much value in that. For me to spend time reading novels. I'm not saying it's wrong to read novels. I'm just saying that's my choice I made. Okay? So if you are reading novels, that's fine, but remember it's your choice. <laughs> it's my choice I made. So <laughs> let me read this quote to you. In the church eight book. Uh, seven church ages, chapter five. Chapter five. The Pegamian Church Age. And program says this. One night I was seeking the Lord. The Holy Spirit told me to pick up my pen and write. As I grasped the pen to write, His Spirit gave me a message for the church. I want to bring it to you. It has to do with the word and the bride. Again, who is you? Yeah? Make it personal. Yes. It's not the person sitting next to you. If you do that with sermons, you will never get anything for yourself. It's for you. You personally. Amen. Amen. And he says, here is what I'm writing to say to you. The law of reproduction is that each species brings forth after its own kind. Even according to Genesis 1 verse 11. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass. And the herb yielding seed. 
And a fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind. Who sees this in itself upon the earth? And it was so. Whatever life was in the seed came forth into a plant and thence into a fruit. The very same law applies to the church today. Whatever seed started the church will come forth and be like the original seed. Because it is the same seed. Listen carefully. In these last days, the true bright church, Christ's seed, will come to the headstone. And she will be the super church. A super race as she nears him. They in the bride will be so much like him that they will even be in his very image. This is in order to be united with him. They will be one. They will be the very manifestation of the word of the living God. Denominations cannot produce this wrong seed. They will produce their creeds and their dogmas mixed with the word. This mongrelizing brings forth a hybrid product. Since the first son, Adam, was the spoken seed word of God. He was given a bride to reproduce himself. That is why the bride was given to him. To reproduce himself. To produce another son of God. But she fell. She fell by hybridization. She caused him to die. The second son, Jesus, also a spoken seed word of God, was given a bride like as was Adam. But before he could marry her, she also had fallen. She, like Adam's wife, was put to the test whether she would believe the word of God and live or doubt the word and die. She doubted. She left the word. She died. Listen carefully. From a little group of the true seed of the word, God will present Christ with a beloved bride. She's a virgin of his word. She's a virgin because she knows no man-made creeds or dogmas. By and through the members of the bride, will be fulfilled all that was promised of God to be made manifest in the virgin. The, the word of promise came to the virgin Mary. But that word of promise was he himself to be made manifest. God was made manifest. He himself acted at the time and fulfilled his own word of promise in the virgin. It was an angel that had brought her the message. But the angel's message was the word of God. Isaiah 9 verse 6, he fulfilled at that time all that was written of him because she accepted his word to her. Amen. Amen. Where was that message coming from? Brother Abraham was inspired and said, write this to the church. Write this to you. Amen. So it's for you, right? Amen. Now, you remember in the Old Testament, when Solomon was building a temple, because we're talking about a temple, aren't we? A place where God can dwell. You know what they did? They went away from the temple. They created all the material they needed. They shaped all the stones carefully. 
They shaped all the stones carefully. And then they brought them into the temple yards. And they fitted them together. So that there was no noise where the temple was. But all the work that was done just fitted perfectly. Amen? Amen. Everything went into its right place. This masterpiece bride is the same. Yeah. We talk about election. God has carefully chosen what goes into this masterpiece. The material is tried and tested. He's not going to put anything that was wrong into this masterpiece. And the material will fit perfectly. Everything in its right place. Each item has a special place. And that's determined by the sculptor. He's the one that makes the decisions. He's the one that chooses who should take what part. But remember, everything will fit together perfectly. Now, Parabranam sometimes talk about a symphony or a sympathy. Now, if you know anything about a symphony orchestra, there are people playing different instruments to produce one to produce one beautiful sound I have a picture for you here is there another one that one right so this here is the arrangement of a symphony orchestra you see all the different things here? Violins, harps, cellos, drums, woodwinds of the trumpets, brass, all different kind of things. Each one is put in a specific place. A specific place. But there is one thing the orchestra is trying to do. Good music. Okay? Amen. Let's look at the other picture. This one. So here they are in action. Now, before these guys ever start playing, they tune up their instruments. And the sound of tuning can be horrible sometimes. And you know, God is tuning. God is tuning. <laughs> It hurts sometimes, but remember the end goal. They will be playing in harmony. They will produce good music. They will produce a masterpiece. So when I found this photo, they said something interesting about the photo. And I'll read it out to you. It says that the layout of the orchestra also varies. But it generally follows a tried and tested format. I like those words, don't you? Brother Brown preached a message. Time tested memorials. And in there, he said everything that goes into God's building is tried and tested. You know where testimony comes from, right? Yes. Test, then testimony. So she's tried and tested. It goes on, it says, the players are seated in a semicircle facing the conductor. The conductor's down here. Amen? Have we got a conductor? Sure so we have. Look to Jesus. Yeah. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Look to Jesus. And he says, this layout is the most commonly used. But there are many other possible ways to arrange the players. Listen carefully to this last slide. The decision ultimately lies with the conductor. Yeah. I hope you got your spiritual hat on. Yeah. There's nothing random about that. 
It's tried and tested. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God's provided way always works. So different parts, different parts, different instruments. If you took the drums and put them at the front, you mess up the setup. But remember, the ultimate decision lays with the conductor. In the Bible, that's what we call say God is sovereign. Amen. That's what sovereignty means. The way Paul said it, he said, you know, can the clay complain to the potter that why you make it in this vessel? We can't. The Bible says, Yet, O Lord, thou art our Father. We are the clay. Thou art the porter. Amen? Amen. The ultimate decision lays with the conductor. Listen. You have a special place to fill the body of Christ. A special place. God shows that place for you. Not the pastor. He didn't. He didn't even choose his own place. <laughs> God put him in that place. So it's a conductor's decision. You've got a special place in the body of Christ. And that special place, you've got to fit in it specially. When all the different parts of the body are brought together, they fit perfectly. There will be nothing hanging off. Nothing left off, nothing lacking. Everything will fit perfectly. Now the body, the Bible types, types us to the body, right? They types us as a body. Now in your body, you're not all eyes, are you? That would be horrible, wouldn't it? <laughs> you know all eyes. <laughs> you've got eyes. You've got ears. You've got feet. You've got toes. Now if the toe looks up one day and says, Oi! There's no vision down here. I need to go up and become an eye. What a horrible picture. It's not going to work. That's why Paul taught us. Stay in the place that God has put you. Don't try to be something else. It doesn't work. God likes authenticity. Don't try to become something else. That's the problem with the world today. There's too much celebrity. People are trying to be something else. This person wants to have this because that person has it. Friends, that's not true Christianity. God likes original. Stay in the place that God has put you. You know what? You are in that place to meet a specific need. And nobody else can take your place. So you need to stay there and make sure that the body has that requirement. Amen? Amen. Are we together? The material is tried and tested. Let me read you another quote. I promise you I'm coming to a close. Three kinds of believers in 1963. Now Abraham speaking. Joseph, another believer, Joseph, he couldn't help being what he was. He was a prophet. God made him a prophet. He didn't want to be different from his brothers. But he was different. God made him what he was. Nobody else could take his place. Listen. Nobody can take your place. No matter how little you say I'm just a housewife nobody can take your place God in his great economy has so said so has so said so the body of Christ 
in order till there is no one can take your place. He says, how I would like to take Billy Graham's place? Any of us ministers? But we can't do it. But just remember, Billy can't take our place. See, we, are, we all have a place. Some of us are evangelists, some prophets, some teachers, some pastors, whatever we are, some housewives, some mechanics, some farmers, whatever it is, God has set you in your place. See? Amen? God has built a masterpiece. In Ephesians 5, it says this masterpiece will be without spot or wrinkle. Yes? Uh, now, when the Bible talks of spot, that means dirt. Dirt, sin, right? So it should be sinless. Because he's cleansed her already. But the Bible also says wrinkle. And that one bothered me for a while. Because you know what a wrinkle You see my shirt has got many wrinkles. Yeah? It's a clean shirt. It's a clean shirt, a pure bride. But it has got many wrinkles. And God doesn't like wrinkles. That's why it says that bride will be without spot or wrinkle. So even though she's cleansed and she's pure, there will be no you know, disunity. No, no little things among the people. Yeah, Abraham called it little funny feelings among the people. There will be none of that. Among the believers, there will be none of that. Amen. Amen. Here is Paul's advice to her. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4. That is my last scripture. And I'm going to leave my last few quotes. I'll get you to read them yourself at home. <clears throat> and I'll start verse 1 and I'll read really quickly to get down to verse 16. <clears throat> I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. So let me ask you, is your life worthy of the gospel? You can listen to that one too. It says, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Endeavoring to keep the unity of spirit in the bond of Peace. I think what the psalm is that say you should pursue peace. That means if he's running away from you, run after it. And catch it. And try and keep peace. And it says there is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Remember, this is not what a baptism we're talking about. Even though we have the one, the Bible way. This is talking about the baptism that puts you in the body of Christ. It's the same Holy Spirit baptism. For every single one of us. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. So there is grace for the place that God has put in the body of Christ. Enough grace for you to carry it out. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he has now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? <clears throat> Verse 11, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, and some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers 
For what purpose? For the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. So God has made provision for the body to be made perfect. By giving forth a fivefold ministry. Amen? Amen. That's God's provided way to meet that need. Till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And this is good. That we henceforth be no more children. Tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. By the, by the state of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. From whom the whole body fitly, sorry, from whom the whole body fitly joins together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part. Maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Amen. Amen. Let me read this quickly and then I'll close. In that message, I identified the masterpiece of God. Ram says, to be his bride, you must be part of him. Not part of the creed. Not part of the church. Not part of the denomination. But the part of him. Shoot out of any other kind of form won't work. You've got to be hewed from the word. The word cut off of you. And just leave the word only living you. This is beautiful. The great sculptor is counting on you. Willing to stand and have yourself shaped in the likeness of his requirements that his word requires. And later on he says, are you willing? Are you ready, my friend? Are you really sure that your life is so reflecting for Christ, no matter what the world says? Amen. Amen. I'm going to stop them. Because if I read again, I can recite it again. So God bless you, Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be the name of the Lord. This was the Lord of the Lord. 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 Amen. We give God the praises. Just to have a look at what God is doing. Amen. Amen. And especially what He is doing in your life. He's busy building. We are not spectators to this. But we are part of the program. Amen. Amen. So we must know what God is doing in us. So we're not looking at somebody else, but we're looking at ourselves. And you must see how far God has gone. 
Amen. Amen. So you see, he's building a tabernacle. So that he might come and dwell in there. A great sculptor of this time. Yeah. To make sure he will come and dwell in you. The power of the Holy Ghost himself. He needs a dwelling place. Do you see the continuity? Amen. Amen. Oh, the Lord is wonderful. Praise God. I didn't tell him what to preach on. But that's a continuation. Praise God. Amen. Amen. The Lord is wonderful. I was just enjoying it myself. Amen. As the preacher was going on. He's still with him. Amen. Amen. We want to sing the song together. Because it is true that he's still working on it. Amen. Amen. So remember, every trial in your life, was predestinated. Is that right? Every chisel that was put on this uh, on this work of sculpture, it was necessary so that you and me might be inspired in this end time. You can never come out right until he tries you. Because certain things have got to be cut out of you. Amen. Amen. End time circumcision. Praise God Amen. to make sure that something right has got to come out of you. Don't you love it? Amen. Amen. King Oni, Blessing the song to, to make the water ought to be. Oh, it took him just a week to make the moon and the sun and the air.